Hello and welcome to the Down Under Visa Philippines to Australia podcast. Uh, this is your host Jeff Harvey, registered migration agent from Down Under Visa here in Manila. Now, this particular episode is from the Down Under Visa blog article, Correcting NSO Document Errors for Australian Visa Applications. Okay, NSO Document Errors and Australian Immigration. Now, NSO documents are those government documents that contain the records of your life within the Philippines, from birth, marriage and death. Your Filipino wife, fiancé or partner will have these documents, as will anyone who is born, gets married or dies within the Philippines. And it's all recorded and distributed from the one national office. Now, we've already explained in the last article about problems with NSO documents and how these can throw the applicant's identity, family connections and marital status into question and how, unfortunately, very common are errors in these documents. Now, this time we'll talk about what you need to do about these errors. If you didn't catch up with the last article, please go and read it or please listen to the the previous podcast, which will get you up to speed. Now, firstly, NSO documents, how not to correct them. You may notice that I tend to avoid using the term fix when it comes to errors in documents. That's very deliberate. The term fix is commonly used in the Philippines for fake and illegal dealings with documents. It means a forgery or one mistake being covered up with another one. A person who does this is known as a fixer. And down under visa will never abide by any documents that have been fixed. Now we're bound by a code of conduct where we have to be absolutely straight about things. Otherwise we certainly risk losing our registration, but I mean, from your perspective, please be grateful that we uh, are fastidious about this because uh, uh, it's like letting one of these things loose is like a ticking time bomb. It's it's only a matter of time before it it, it rears its ugly head and you regret that your actions, if you act in haste, repent at leisure, very much the case when it comes to uh, falsified documents. And who is this fixer? Now, we get mental images of the sleazy man in the alley who will, you know, the one with the hat and the the hat and the coat and the dark sunglasses. And and yes, this most definitely exists. Um, Although you'll discover not necessarily down a dark alley. It can be quite public. Now, where there's a will, there's a way. Somebody will always make a buck from it. Now, if you're looking at the blog article, um, there is a link there. Please have a look at this. It's uh, whoa, it's, it's um, amusing and scary at the same time. It shows a public market in Manila where uh, uh, you can you can buy anything. You can buy anything by the, in the way of false documents. Uh, so please have a look at that, but with the understanding that this is not a recommendation. Yes, this most certainly does exist. But you would need to be a serious idiot to do this. However, let me explain what is probably far worse. The official fixers. Now, the scariest type of fixer is a smart and helpful lady, usually a lady, behind the counter of a government office with an important job and an air of trustworthiness about her or him. Now, this person can particularly catch out a young and naive visa applicant who's been brought up to respect her elders and those in in important positions and may well get conned. Now, the document that this person will supply will be on the official SECPA, S-E-C-P-A, which is short for security paper. Um, It's an official paper source that is used for birth certificates, etc., to avoid obvious forgeries. It's a very quick way of discovering whether something is fake or whether it's a very nice coloured photocopy. Um, 
Now, trying to tell the difference between a real and a fake document can be quite challenging because, again, they come from the same paper source. However, when dealing with the Australian Embassy or the Department in Australia, they know all about this and they know what to do. Um, you know, there are certain things which give it away to us, but, you know, that's <laughs> that comes from experience. Um, but, yes, again, that, that is the issue, is that somebody is sitting there and says, oh, I don't know what to do. And the helpful lady says, oh, look, you know, I, I, we can, you know, this could drag out for years, but I, I can, uh, you know, I work I work for, you know, the NSO. I, I can get this fixed up for you. It'll only, you know, if you can you know, get me 5,000 pesos, I'll fix it up for you. They present them with a document and this poor person thinks the problem's gone away. Well, it hasn't. Let me explain. Now, the Australian Embassy Solutions to Bogus NSO Documents. Now, years ago we used to get NSO documents from clients and we would paper clip them to the old paper application forms. However, the level of fraud that was going on meant that they changed how they did things and they came up with a very good close working relationship with the NSO. Yes, nowadays, um, after the application is lodged, we order the documents that are necessary for the application directly from the NSO to be delivered directly to the Australian Embassy. Now, what happens to the forgeries? Now, the clever copies on SECPA from the helpful lady who offered to fix the problem for 5,000 pesos, well, these dodgy documents will never go anywhere near the Embassy. Now all that effort to get a near perfect fake document goes to waste and they catch you out anyway. And if you registered a birth twice in order to, co to cover something up, well, guess what? The embassy will get both documents and you will get a request to explain yourself. Now, <laughs> this is how we, uh, <laughs> we discovered all of, all of this from experience over the years. We first discovered this one years ago when somebody went and did the, you know, well, we'll just get the second document. Um, well, there's a memorandum of understanding between the Australian Embassy and the NSO here where, uh, you know, they get access to things that uh, a man on the street doesn't get. So if there, are, if, there, if there are two birth certificates floating around, yes, that's exactly what they do. They will deliver both, which means, okay... They know at least one of them is a fraudulent document. So uh, once that happens, well, you know, you are <laughs> you are finished. So if you do happen to have things like that, uh, don't wait for it to come up. If you are our client, you have to talk talk to us about this, and we will explain to you how to deal with it. Now, how to properly correct NSO document errors. Now, this is how it works. Um, Years ago, everything went to court, um, but for even very, very simple errors, that was the only way anything got done and it took forever. Now, but the first place to go is the local civil registrar, which is where the documents with the errors originated from. Most of the mistakes took, they started there. Okay, so you go back there and um, so that means going to the office in the town where the birth or the marriage or the death took place. And I'm talking about actual errors here. Any forgeries you have, tear them up. Now, simple errors. Now, by simple, I mean definitely not deliberate lies and false statements. Uh, simple clerical errors, typographical errors, typos. Now, they can be corrected by a petition at an administrative level. Down on the visa can advise you whether your error can be corrected simply or not by at an administrative level, I mean it without without having to take it to court. Um, you know, if it is a simple misspelling, um, if it's very obviously not deliberate, uh, the, there are, there's a set of rules, uh, we, we, and again, we can tell you whether this is what you need to do or not. But again, first place to go is the local civil registrar. Um, look, advice is if the girl isn't confident or if they happen to be giving her a bit of a hard time there, 
go and get a local attorney, get a local one, don't get one from Manila to go, you know, trekking down to Kagayan or somewhere like that. Um, it cost you a fortune. Uh, get somebody local, chances are they're on first name basis with everybody in the local civil registrar. Um, get them to help sort it out. It, it shouldn't cost a small fortune, certainly worthwhile. Um, so that's, that's, that's simple errors um, and you know, they get corrected within a few months basically. Now complicated NSO document errors, these are the worst ones. Now anything which can't be corrected at an administrative level must be corrected at a judicial level. This means it does end up going to court. Um, and in simple terms you can say these are the cases where there may have been fraud or deliberate mistakes or where the effects of the error are highly significant. Um, yes, it means attorneys and it does mean taking the matter to court and that's, that's all there is about it. Now, is this reasonable? Um, this is where people do tend to, they do tend to spit the dummy over these matters. Is this reasonable? Um, is this all bullshit? Um, but I think when you really think about it, if you had a birth certificate or a marriage certificate from Australia that said you were 14 years younger than you actually were and that you were a different gender, you know, do you really think that the Department of Births, Deaths and Marriages are just going to go, oops, or do you think it would be a major issue? I wouldn't fancy your chances in Australia much either. Um, in fact, I mean, they're, they're a lot more tolerant here than I believe they would be in Australia. I mean, somebody can go to court with a document where, you know, they stand up before the judge and say, yes, I, I completely lied on an official document and, you know, I stated that I was married to the father of the child when I wasn't and I put down a date of birth that doesn't exist or, or hey, I, I lied and I claim to be, you know, the, the parent of this child when I'm actually, actually the grandparent. I went and did that on an official document and they go, all right, we'll correct that. Um, I would think they'd probably throw you in jail if you did such a thing in Australia. So, look, it is how it is. I mean, just, again, I understand when people get stressed and, and they get all hot and bothered about it. Um, it's horrible news to find these things out, especially if you're thinking, you know, oh, wow, we're going so well here, we'll probably have this ready to lodge next week and then uh, all of a sudden you know you're hit with this big clangor where we we say I'm sorry to tell you but uh, you know there's some horrendous mistakes on some of these documents um, you're not happy about it but uh, you know don't blame the country don't blame each other for goodness sakes don't blame us uh, you have to deal with this and again down on the visa are not the bad guys uh, wrong information on official NSO documents is bad news and it's our job to give you the right information. If it happens, yes, you will be upset, but we remain on your side, so help us, help us to help you. And again, just to summarise, um, look, small matters should be able to be corrected quite simply at the local civil registrar. Uh, most people can and will do that without an attorney. If the girl is not very confident or not very worldly with such matters or, you know, if they give, if they give her a bit of a hard time about it, well then, by all means, get an attorney and get a local one to help with that. If it is a more complicated matter that needs to be sorted out judicially, you will most certainly need to get an attorney. And just a note regarding... Philippines attorneys, you get varying qualities. Um, some of them are quite, some of them are quite dodgy, and uh, you get your extremely ethical ones, and you get your ones who are used to shortcuts and clever things and bribes here and there and fake documents, etc. You will get attorneys who will get you who, who will suggest getting you further fake documents. Don't do it. Uh, other thing is you will get attorneys who think they know all things because they are attorneys. 
and just as myself or say any Australian lawyer will tell you right from the beginning that they don't know anything about Philippines law unfortunately you will get Philippines attorneys who will claim that they know all about Australian law because they're an attorney they feel qualified to speak with confidence and authority well um, and they you will have attorneys who will who will suggest uh, a simple affidavit and they will assure you that the Australian Embassy will be absolutely fine with that well I'm sorry but that's um, they're talking out of their proverbials uh, I can assure you the Australian Embassy is not okay with an affidavit to fix a serious matter of identity the documents will need to be corrected and that's all there is about it you make it clear to them that you will accept nothing less because anything less is just going to give you further headaches and then you won't see the attorney for a cloud of dust so please stick with what we are saying we we are the experts when it comes to this uh, what we're telling you is correct if we say get it corrected it means get it corrected so not much fun but again remember we are on your side and we will we will see you through to the end Okay, I hope that was beneficial. I hope you enjoyed all that and uh, we will talk to you again next podcast. Thank you.